Okay, so it's from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, verse number 12. Yukta karma phalam tvatva. Yukta karma phalam tvatva. Shantim apnoti naistikim. Ayukta karma karena. Fale sakto nibadhyate. Translation, the steady, the steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the results of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. <clears throat> Read it again. The steadily devoted soul attain, yeah, go ahead attains unadulterated peace because he offers the results of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. Jailer Prabhupada's purport. The difference between a person in Krishna consciousness and a person in bodily consciousness is that the former is attached to, to Krishna, whereas the latter is attached to the results of his activities. The person who is attached to Krishna and works for him only is certainly a liberated person, and he has no anxiety over the results of his work. In the Bhagavatam, the cause of anxiety over the results of an activity is explained as being one's functioning in the conception of duality, that is, without knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Krishna is the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead. In Krishna consciousness, there is no duality. All that exists is a product of Krishna's energy, and Krishna is all good. Therefore, activities in Krishna consciousness are on the absolute plane. They are transcendental and have no material effect. One who is therefore filled with peace, in, one is therefore filled with peace in Krishna consciousness. But one who is entangled in profit calculation for sense gratification cannot have that peace. This is the secret of Krishna consciousness. Realiz realization and that that there is no existence besides Krishna is the platform of peace and fearlessness. 
Omagyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaur Vari Pacharine Nir Vishesha Sunyavari Pastyatyade Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Ganadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So here it talks about one who is steadily devoted and in devotional service. In other words, one who is uh, fixed in offering devotion to Krishna. Now, sometimes it's maybe understood that steady means to do the same thing every day. In other words, get up at the same time, attend the morning programs, chant your rounds, take prasadam at the same time. In other words, to remain in a very clock-type steady atmosphere, which we call regulation. But actually, the word steady doesn't mean that. It means steadily devoted. One who, in other words, constantly is devoted to the Supreme Lord by offering everything to Him. In other words, it's more of a state of consciousness than a regulated activity. Of course, regulative activity may be also there. And it says regulation is also the key to staying, what we say, uh, fixed in one's activities. But here, and this is what it really means, is that one who is devoted in a steadily way. In other words, uh, a person who goes in and out of their Consciousness. In other words, sometimes they're devoted to their own results of activities, and sometimes they're devoted to the to the Supreme Lord. That's not steady devoted. That's uh, what we say. Sometimes up, sometimes down. <clears throat> uh, we call that uh, what is that called? We call it unsteady. Yeah. But real steadiness means that. Uh, I keep my consciousness fixed on the activities of devotional service and to offer those activities as a service to the Lord. That's what it means to be steadily devoted. So here it says that one who does follow follow that principle uh, becomes connected to the Supreme Lord. In other words, they are actually on the transcendental platform. What is that verse from the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita? Um, hmm, what is it? 13.26. It's a really nice verse. Or is it 14? Actually, it's 14.26. Which says, Brahma, Brahma, no, 1426. No, that's not it. It's actually 1326. I think. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatman Asociatina Kangsati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Labate Param. Hmm. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that means it's uh, 1427, maybe. Mam chayo vyapi charena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samatiti aitam brahma buyaya kopate. One who is engaged in full devotional service unfailing in all circumstance, at once transcends the modes of material nature and comes to the spiritual platform or the Brahman platform. 
<clears throat> which is the spiritual path. In other words, by remaining steadily devoted, one transcends the three modes of material nature and actually is connected with Krishna through the process of devotional service. Devotional service is meant to connect us with Krishna. What is that connection? Just like when you do something for something, a person, say you are cooking for that person. In other words, that person will come and sit down and accept the food that is offered to him or her. And, and then they are accepting your offering and they're also becoming satisfied and pleased by that activity. So in the same way, Krishna is actually accepting our offering and we're actually connected with Krishna and feeling the presence of Krishna. What is that feeling? We're no longer feeling the effects of the, the modes of material nature. And we are actually feeling the presence of the Lord in devotion. It's a state of consciousness, but that state of consciousness causes one to become what we say, Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma. Prasannatma means joyful. Prashan Atma, the soul becomes somewhat joyful. It doesn't lament Nashoshati, Nakankshati, no lamentation, no, uh, what we say, anxiety. <clears throat> and uh, they become equally disposed to all living entities. They treat everyone in the same way, equally, as a spiritual being. So this verse here gives them the principle. And uh, one who is not on that platform, in other words, one who falls into the mode of passion, what is that mode of passion? Mode of passion is I do something and I look for some results by that activity. I'm looking to find something in that, in that activity to give me something from the activity I perform. In other words, some external gain. In the material world, people want something. They want some remuneration, some praise, maybe some, some financial, some pecuniary uh, 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 rewards for whatever they do. In other words, they want something. They're motivated by the results. The activity becomes the, the means to get the results. But in devotional service, it's the activity that is the end in itself. <laughs> in other words, we perform the activity for the pleasure of the Lord, to, for the pleasure of the spiritual master, for the pleasure of the devotees also. And that becomes the activity itself, wherein it, the materialists, they won't do anything unless they can see some personal gain from whatever they're doing. And because of that, they become entangled into this duality, sometimes feeling satisfied and sometimes unsatisfied. In other words, they're on the, they're on the materialistic platform. Materialistic platform means duality. There's opposites, good, bad, uh, whatever opposite you find in this world, whatever activity you find in this world, you find an opposite for that. And so this world is divided into black and white, to good and bad, honor, dishonor, heat and cold, like that. So many different opposites. And therefore, one can never be happy even if they get the results of what they want, the results are also lost in time because material re results are not stable. Because the material energy is called, it's called mutable. Mutable means changeable. It's always changing. So we take the changing material energy and engage it into devotional activity and that becomes what we say unchangeable, becomes steady. The devotee becomes steady in offering the activity. That's why one can perform the same activity every day and still find satisfaction in the same activity. Whereas a non-devotee will always look for something different, something new, because 
they can't find satisfaction. If they do, it's temporary, and then it doesn't, and then after some time, they again look for something different, something new. You'll see that this is how society is run. All these people want something different, something new. The whole, uh, the whole technological development of the, what we say, the human race, we can't call it development, we might call it the technological disaster, and it causes one to perpetuate itself more and more. Prabhupada also talks about that in a basic principle. <clears throat> Not so much in technology, but he talks about it in, if a person, a, a person in the material world has a thousand dollars, they think I need to have two thousand. And if they have two thousand, they want four thousand. A millionaire will have a million, he wants two million. <laughs> They're never satisfied with whatever they have, and they, they become motivated only to gain more like that. And that's their motivation, just to gain more. Whether they become happy or not is secondary. They don't usually become happy because the, the endeavor and the results are not satisfying. And therefore, they keep trying for more. If there was satisfaction, they wouldn't try for more. They would be satisfied with what they have. But a devotee can be satisfied in any situation. Just like now, we find ourselves in the midst of a whole, what we say, a routine change. Um, the devotees all around the world are, what we say, limited to their movements. And so the rest of the world is also. So here we are at the temple. There's about seven or eight of us in one place. And we're happy. <laughs> we got our service. The deity is here. We're chanting Hare Krishna. We're not able to hold programs so much. We're not able to, uh, when we say, move around and go outside and do things so much. And uh, we're very restricted in, or we're very careful in how we do things because we're always uh, concerned about getting contaminated, but still, devotees are happy. Why? Because they have devotional service. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Whether, if you don't have devotional service, even if you're in a good material position, you can't really use that position to find satisfaction because uh, it doesn't last. It keeps changing, changing, changing. So devotees can change and be happy, and devotees can stay in the same situation and still be happy because it's not the situation that makes a difference. We have the example of um, of Chitraketu, who in his former life was a very powerful king, and then uh, he had he wanted a son. And he, his, none of his wives could produce a son. Finally, he received a blessing to produce a son, but the blessing was only a way to get him to learn that he wasn't meant to have a son. And so, And that detached him from the idea of having a son. And when he lost his son, he gave up everything, his kingdom and everything, and became a great devotee of the Lord and started meditating on Sankarshan. He was chanting the mantras in glorification of the Supreme Lord, Lord, Lord Sankarshan. Finally, he became a liberated soul and was traveling all over the universes. And he came to the heavenly realm, and there was Parvati and Shiva in the midst of an assembly. And Parvati was sitting on Shiva's lap, and there was a large group of sages and demigods there. And Shiva was presiding over the ceremony. When uh, he was flying on his airplane, when he saw the situation, he thought it was quite unusual that here is Shiva presiding over this big assembly of great demigods. Lord Brahma was there also, Narada Muni, many. And he has his wife sitting on his lap. So he laughed. <laughs> he laughed. He thought it was quite... He wasn't criticizing, but he thought it was quite unusual to see that situation. When Parvati understood what happened, she became very upset. And then, of course, she cursed him. <clears throat> she chastised him very heavily first and said, Oh, you think you know better than Lord Brahma, Narada Muni, and all these great demigods who have no objection. But you, 
who are you? And you're making some objection about Lord Shiva. So she cursed him to become a demon and go to hell. When he received the curse, he offered his obeisances. He said, thank you, Mother, for, for offering me this, this punishment. I accept the punishment. And he offered his obeisances. When Shiva saw that, she was amazed, and he spoke this famous verse, that the devotees of the Lord, wherever they are, they're fixed on the Lord, whether it's hell, heaven and hell, or whatever the situation is. The situation doesn't matter. They're always, it's like a compass who is always uh, programmed towards the north. So in the same way, a devotee finds himself in maybe in different material situations, but they never, they keep their consciousness fixed on the Lord and on, on in devotional service. So therefore, they're satisfied in any and all situations. Whereas a materialist, or even what we say, a, a neophyte devotee, might become uncomfortable due to the situation and look for a different situation. But, a devotee will find, oh, the Lord has placed me in this situation, so let me serve this way. And therefore, they remain fixed in devotional service. And it says here, not only fixed, they remain steady. And then to that steady, they get what is called, the word is unadulterated peace. The word here is used as, uh, let's see what word is used for unadulterated. Let's see. Uh, shantim is perfect peace. Shanti, shan, not only per peace, but that peace which is completely perfect. And therefore, they remain steady in their devotional service and find happiness in that. <clears throat> so that's the difference between one who is uh, looking for some gain in whatever they do or as, one, uh, as opposed to one who's simply trying to serve the Lord, to please the Lord. So keeping the, the instructions of the spiritual master foremost as a form of uh, direction in everything we do helps us to attain that activity which brings about peace. What, how to serve in each and every situation in the best possible way. Aside from our sadhana, we have regular daily activities just like we're, we engage in cooking and cleaning and in repairing things and uh, doing various types of temple activities, might be restricted from going out and doing sankirtan and doing these activities, which you might, we might find more inspiring and joyful. But then we say, oh, well, the Lord has created it has allowed us to be in this situation, so we're satisfied. We get a chance to hear and chant more. We get a chance to associate with the devotees more. Just like I was speaking to some of my disciples today on the phone, and one disciple, she pointed out something really I thought was very important, that people now, when they see each other, they become more friendly. <laughs> in the sense that, you know, before... Uh, people went on, they were so busy in their own activities, nobody had time for each, for each other. Now everybody's got time, so when they see their neighbor, they wave, they smile. They may not come real close together, but at least when they see another person, it's like, oh, Hare Krishna, or, you know, not, or not that, not Hare Krishna, but anyway. They are, you know, more friendly. One of the things that this, this, uh, epidemic is done, pandemic, is bring families closer together now. And uh, people are spending more time with their children, with their husbands, with their wives, like that. <clears throat> Where most of the time the children at school, the husband's working, the wife's at home, or the wife's working, the husband's working, the children are somewhere. <laughs> Nobody sees each other. They, they meet once in a while. <clears throat> One devotee was telling one story where one young boy, he said to his mother when he was five years old, who's that man in the house? She said, oh, that's your father. He never saw his father because when he was growing up, his father was always working 
And when he was sleeping, his father was home. So he never saw his father for, for many years, finally, uh, at one point. So yeah, it's like that in, in today's modern, what we say, progressive life. People are more connected to their technological instruments than they are to each other. Uh, and we see that people are so absorbed in their cell phones, computers, and whatever other gadgets they have have now smartphones, this thing, that thing. And nobody, just like, no, sometimes people are in the same house and uh, instead of going to talk to each other, they call each other on the phone, you know. Just like the next room, all you have to do is walk over there. But <laughs> So we, we, we've created a society where it's become absurd. That's why this whole thing is being smashed now by this uh, pandemic, it's, it's, it's reached a point of absurdity. It's like I was reading, over 200 different species of uh, fish and other forms of life have become extinct in the last 10 years due to industrialization. Uh, you know, forestration, industrialization has raped the earth and destroyed it and made us extinct at least 200 different species of life. No longer that, that type of life exists anymore. So we're on a headlong course to destroy the world. <laughs> and so Maya has jumped in and put a little bit stop on that because Maya is the material energy. And she put a stop on it by stopping the living entities from <laughs> continuing their headlong destruction of the earth. <clears throat> And somebody else was telling me today, just like they're going outside and they're noticing the air is much more cleaner and easier to breathe. The water is even very much noticeably cleaner. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the earth is getting a chance to revive itself with its natural resources because the living entities have stopped plundering the earth due to their, what we say, obnoxious form of lifestyle. It's actually obnoxious because it has no regard for any other life. <laughs> kill the animals, kill the birds, kill the trees, kill the water, kill the air, kill everything. But let's have my cell phone. Let me have my, <laughs> you know, my computers and whatever else I have. And let me have all these kinds of industrial wastes that come by way of all the technological gadgets that we've created, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, therefore people are now finding peace. Not so, before nobody's finding peace, and now that they're forced to find peace on a, on a more human-like level with family and maybe within themselves if they can tolerate the fact that this is is actually something uh, what we say meant to be in order to bring the living entities back to a more certain saner form of existence whether it will last whether we'll learn our lesson that remains to be seen yet <laughs> <clears throat> okay but a devotee wherever you place them wherever you place her they're fine why because they have their devotional service they can chant Hare Krishna that's all they want and the reading they can read Prabhupada's books anywhere so the devotee is happy any any questions comments <laughs> Hmm. 
regarding this verse that you quoted, Mamcho, um, Kakonoide. Mamcho yo vyapi charena. From Shraddha to Prema, what level would that describe? If you can please explain, what level of development from Shraddha to Prema would that verse describe? Well, it's the, it's the word nishta means steady. So when one is steadily engaged in devotional service, until 75% Bhakti Vinoda Kaur describes in Bhajana Rahasya, and until 75% of one's anarthas, unwanted things within one's life are removed, one cannot reach the prior form of nishta. So the other 25% can be, uh, what we say, eradicated as one progresses further in devotional service. But the platform of nishta means that now, the ma it doesn't matter what's happening or what's not happening, a devotee remains steady in the execution of their devotional service. Whereas when the anarthas are still strong, then they sometimes cause the devotee to become diverted in devotional service in order to fulfill the anartha, or sometimes the anartha causes one to commit an offense, and that slows down and sometimes even halts one's progress in devotional service. So nishta, Adao, Strata, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya, Anartha, Nivriti. Nishta is the fifth stage. And from Nishta comes Ruchi. Ruchi means one becomes joyful. Brahma, Bhuta, Prashanatma. That verse is on the platform of uh, Ruchi. Na Soshiti, Na Kongshiti. Sama, Sarveshu, Bhuteshu. Mad Bhakti, Lavate, Pralam. So yeah, different different stages of devotional service. When you get to the platform of ashakti, uh, you're moving into the platform of uh, spontaneous devotional service, <laughs> or raganuga bhakti, and then it becomes really fixed on bhava, and then of course prema is the ultimate, which is the goal. <laughs> So a devotee should see what are those things in one's practice of devotional service that's keeping one from making progress. And Rupa Goswami explains in the uh, Nectar of Instructions the six things that destroy one's devotional service. Atyahara, Prayasa, Prajalpa, Niramagaha, uh, Saru, what is it? Uh, so, Atyahara, too much eating or too much collecting of material things. Uh, um, over endeavor to get so many material things in order to do my devotional service. I have to have this, I have to have that, I have to have this, I have to have this situation. Uh, Prajapa, hmm comes in different forms, but ultimately it means speaking things that are contrary or not necessary for one's devotional life. Niyamagraha means acting whimsically and not following the rules and regulations, or following rules and regulations and not knowing why one's following it, doing it in a very, what we say, mechanical way. Um, and then... Uh, Atsatsanga, association with non-devotees. And the last one is Laoyam, greediness for material things. This greediness for sense gratification. In other words, still the desire for sense gratification. One performs devotional service in order to satisfy one's personal senses. These are the six main things that block one's practice progress in devotional service. And Rupa Goswami in the following verse gives us six things which are favorable 
and are important for devotional service. So as we overcome our anarthas and avoid those things that block our devotional service and follow those things that are favorable and develop the mood of detachment in our activities, in other words, offering the results to Krishna, to the spiritual master, then the devotee becomes steady. When it becomes steady, they become peaceful. Peaceful really means that, you know, in any situation, uh, I can engage in devotional service. I don't require anything except the activity of devotional service. Mm -hmm. Or materialists can't function unless the, the activity is surrounded by so many other things. <laughs> It's like if you get sick, and like it says, is there's no material impediments to devotional service. So what does that mean? That means you can perform devotional service in any material situation. Even if you're sick, you may not be able to do active service, but you can chant, or you may be able to read, offer prayers, or something you'll be able to do to continue on in your devotional service. So material energy cannot touch uh, the, the realm of spiritual activities. But if we're not situated in nishta, or what we say fixed in devotional service, we allow the material things to affect our, our, our progress in devotional service. Just like it says, uh, a good businessman will make a profit when the prices go down and when the prices go up. So it doesn't matter whether the prices are going up or down because he's a smart businessman. He knows how to always make his profit in any situation. So devotees, whether everything is going nice materially or not, still, they can still remain fixed in devotional service. We're not so much dependent on the external environment. Some external environments are more conducive than others, but ultimately it is one's desire that makes the difference. If you want to serve, and, and Krishna will always provide you the opportunity for service. So we sh this really applies to our present situation. And if this goes on long enough, say it goes on for another three months, some people are saying it'll go on. After a while, the devotees will get so accustomed to this situation, they'll like it. They'll think, oh, I hope it doesn't change. <laughs> Boy, I'm getting a lot of time for chanting, I'm reading, I'm learning more, I'm discussing. It's just like, you know, I got more opportunities to preach than ever before now. I'm giving two classes a day. <laughs> before, some days I wasn't even giving any classes. <laughs> so now it's two classes a day. So, you know, it's not like there's a big loss in our our spiritual life because the material energy changes this way or that way. So remain steady. That's all. And that steadiness attracts the attention of the Lord. They say sometimes you can do something for like one month or one year, five years maybe even 10 years, but can you, do, can you do devotional service your whole life? That'll be a test. And if you have that determination and continue on, Krishna will say, oh, this person really wants me. Then Krishna will do more and more things to arrange for that devotee, devotee to come back to him. <laughs> Krishna will see, oh, this devotee really wants me. 
they they're they're doing their devotional service year after year and they're they're not you know, deterred by happiness and distress we have to try for that happiness may come and distress may come but a devotee always thinks oh this happiness and distress is simply the, the changing features of the material energy and so one minute you're full of energy the next minute you're tired <laughs> one minute you're feeling enthusiastic about the next minute you're not having any, the same enthusiasm is not there but that these are things are not are not meant to discourage discourage her. the dualities the changes and how because the modes are always changing we were talking about the modes of material and nature uh, last night <clears throat> and how you know the mode of goodness sometimes becomes prominent the mode of passion becomes prominent sometimes the mode of ignorance becomes prominent so sometimes these modes also affect the devotees and how they feel and how they think but a devotee knows, oh, well, I still have my devotional service. Maybe I'm not so enthusiastic for whatever reason, but still, I'll, re I'll do my service in the best possible way. Because you see that sometimes a devotee will sometimes reach a point where they lose their enthusiasm for some reason. But that's, that may come due to circumstances. But then again, the devotee thinks, oh, if I just stay fixed in devotional service, enthusiasm will come back again. And it does. <laughs> or if I chant extra rounds, my enthusiasm will come back. It does. <laughs> or if I read Prabhupada's books, I find the answer to some of my feelings and problems just by reading and then everything becomes clear. So the message is to stay steady despite the ups and downs of the material energy. Anything else? Do we have any? We have one question from Sri Devi Mataji. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My question is Guru Maharaj says devotee is happy anywhere. But sometimes devotees are simply unable to be happy in a particular yatra for many reasons and find it better somewhere else. And this is this under, uh, is this unsteadiness or making a wise choice? It it depends. Could be either one. <laughs> But if we depend on, like it says, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur explains that the motivation for devotional service is of four levels. Uh, fear, happiness, duty, love. <clears throat> the lowest platform is sometimes you hear from certain religious forums that if you don't serve the Lord, the Lord is going to give you a difficult time. He's going to make your life difficult. He's going to punish you. He's going to do so many things. In other words, they use the fear motivation, the fear principle to motivate people to serve the Lord. That's more like dealing with children. <laughs> Higher than that is happiness, where if I'm happy, I'll serve. If I'm not so happy, I won't serve. Or if I don't think I'm going to be happy by serving, I won't serve. <laughs> Higher than that, and the platform of steadiness, is it's my duty. 
Therefore, I do it, whether I feel happy, happy or not happy. And then by remaining fixed on the platform of duty, one will eventually reach the platform of bhakti, where, where one will be motivated simply out of love or out of devotion, <clears throat> wanting to please. So, yeah, if you're in one situation and you're not feeling happy for whatever reason, you may need to adjust your consciousness in order to attain and uh, to see the situation differently. Or it may be more conducive to you for you to serve some other place. But then again, if we leave it up to our minds to decide, and we see that sometimes devotees go from one place to another, to another, to another, not finding any steadiness in any one particular situation. <clears throat> because it's not the situation. They say when you go from place to place, you still carry the same mind with you. So in, in certain situ most situation, it's not the place, but in some rare situation, it may be conducive or better for a devotee to, to serve in a different situation. But then that has to be, has to be uh, arrived at by discussion with the spiritual master or one's authority. Otherwise, we look for the situation that, that we like, but then again, we're still carrying the same consciousness with us. So it may be either one, but mostly it's our own consciousness that needs to be adjusted. <laughs> Just like now, you really can't change your situation so much. <laughs> if you're thinking, well, you know, I'll be enthusiastic when everything is back to quote unquote normal again. <laughs> but then again, you'll miss the opportunity of the, for devotional service then. So, in certain cases it may be the situation, but mostly it's our consciousness that needs to be adjusted. Anything else? Okay. So that's it from this side too. Okay, both sides have come together. Thank you. Jila Prabhupada Kijai. <laughs>